Omar Bearden was an American artist of the greatest importance whose innovations were many, but who's best known for his incredible collage work. He was an African American who, through his art, told the epic story of African America at the same time that he was so committed to telling the story of mankind in general. Romeo Bearden was born in 1911 in Charlotte, North Carolina. He died in 1988, so he went through a long life of changes in the United States, a lot of changes in the world. Um, he saw a lot. He was an African American who looked white to many people, and so I think he also learned a lot about humanity. He was a poet of Harlem who told that story. Uh, he was also a great Southern landscape painter. He gave you the interiors of, of spaces north and south. And so without any nostalgia, he evokes scenes that people knew north and south, especially black Americans. Born in Florida in 1892, Augusta Savage began creating art as a child by using the natural clay found in her hometown. She enjoyed sculpting animals and other small figures, but her father, didn't approve of this activity and did whatever he could to stop her. Despite her father's objections, Savage continued to make sculptures. When the family moved to West Palm Beach, Florida, in 1915, she encountered a new challenge, a lack of clay. Savage eventually got some materials from a local potter and created a group of figures that she entered in a local county fair. Her work was well received, winning the prize and along the way the support of the fair's superintendent, George Graham Curry. He encouraged her to study art despite the racism of the day. After attending Cooper Union in New York City, she made a name for herself as a sculptor during the Harlem Renaissance and was awarded fellowships to study abroad. Savage later served as a director for the Harlem Community Center and created the monumental work The Harp for the 1939 New York World's Fair. If everything was stripped away from me and I had no other support that I could see or appreciate, I would still paint. I would still be doing that. Jacob Lawrence's work celebrates the human quality in, in man. It celebrates the things that we can do to better our condition. And what he tells a, a person in coming in off the street is that your life is important. And it's important to remember something about uh, where we've come from. And this is capturing a part of history. He focuses on liberation and does it in the way that a person would do it on a daily basis. I don't think he's so much concerned about art as he is about life. Uh, there aren't many around like Jacob Lawrence. I saw a newsreel of the bombing of the American gunship called Panay. Right after that, the intercom boomed. Uh, here's Norman Alley, the man who shot this wonderful series. I never forgot that. And when I got to Seattle, Washington, I had about $12.50, and I went right into a pawn shop and bought myself a camera. At 25, Parks picked up a Voigtlander Brilliant, his first camera, and taught himself how to take photos with it. Three years later, he was an official photographer for the town and country department store in St. Paul, Minnesota. He worked for local newspapers and began to document life on the south side of Chicago, for which he won the Rosenwald Fellowship. All that attention landed him a job at the Farm Security Administration, a New Deal government project that involved documenting poor rural work 
workers to generate political support for government aid. In the FSA, Parks took what would become his most famous picture. I work from scrapbooks, I work from drawings, I work from my imagination. It's, it's a combination of all of those things. So um, what I arrive at isn't, it's, it's not traced to any particular one source, it's several sources. So there's a lot of improvisation that goes on while I'm actually painting. It's hard to know exactly how it's going to look at the, at the end, but I do kind of stick within certain parameters, and each time I have a particular kind of, I suppose, goal for that work, whether it's something to do with colour or light or, um, or form in some way. I tend to stick to making the work in one day, and so that could mean, you know, it, it might spill over into another day. The rule of keeping it to that was really about retaining something, in, both in the quality of the mark and then also in my own mind. <laughs> I, I just got used to thinking a certain way about the process of making each work. is an American artist from Los Angeles. He's been chosen to represent the United States in the Venice Biennale, perhaps the biggest commission of any artist's career. I got called a sissy a lot because I was kind of sensitive, creative, very much in touch with my emotions. I was kept safe. That's what I remember the most about before adolescence. It's kind of safe space, really safe. It was almost like a collective. So I really grew up in this matriarchal society that was pretty much self-sustaining, super, super powerful. And they allowed me to be me. You get out of school, you're working a trade, which is being a hairdresser. I want to make artwork, and I need material that's cheap. So necessity kind of makes invention. End papers, these small two-by-two two rectangles that you use for doing perms. For, for African-American people, you do jerry curls. <laughs> there were 50 cents a box. I can experiment. I can make mistakes. There's no way that I could do that with oil paint. I'm an artist in Washington, D.C. I'm an artist that grew up around the Washington Public School. We had what was called a movement, but it was like a community movement through desire to do things. I decided to work with the canvas just as it was painted on the floor and work from the floor to the wall, and also to work with uh, long lengths of canvas up to 75 feet. I guess today you'd say that we learned to think outside the box, but we also learned to think in the context of the larger art world because everyone in Europe were beginning to work with concepts that were unknown generally. And color was, of course, the principal element that was used to construct with. Started with the idea of making the material or using the material. I think that these kinds of ideas enforce the way one worked, particularly with me. De-stretching the painting, folding the painting, letting things happen naturally with the paint by handing it. Uh, was always a part of, in time, arriving at the painting. Alma Thomas was born in Columbus, Georgia. Her art career took off at age 69 after she retired from being a high school art teacher. She experimented with color, lines, shapes, and patterns. Mankind's exploration of space inspired many of her artworks. She was the first African-American woman to have a solo show at the Whitney Museum of American Art.